SOT family, listen, we are so excited today. We are back with another episode of SOT The Talk, and we're about to have a conversation with a mover and a shaker um, that I'm super excited that is joining our show. Uh, we have Julio that's with us. He is the founder uh, of an organization called Share Knowledge International. We're going to peel back the layers, how he became the founder, what the organization is all about, and he is the 100th most influential uh, of Young Africa's leaders for 2019 and 2020 in two areas, philanthropy and social business. I tell you, at this time, Julio, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Catherine. I'm super happy to be here today. Yes, now share with everyone, um, because I think this is an interesting conversation. Where are you calling in from? <laughs> I'm calling in from Mozambique, a country that is located in Southeast Africa. Yes. So I tell you, <laughs> um, one, thank you for taking your time to be a part of SOT, the talk this evening. Uh, and two, we, we thank you in advance for the knowledge that you're going to share. I tell you, I mean, you're the founder of Share Knowledge International. Share with everyone first, before you go into the <laughs> details about that, what sparked the interest in you to even become an entrepreneur? Oh, I grew up seeing a lot of, especially women taking, you know, the lead of their lives mm. most of the times by doing business. And I, I just witnessed how much change can happen with just a single person mm. uh, realizing that, you know, I have the power to change my life. I'm going to get the education that I need to make things happen and just going out there and make things happen. Um, to me, being an entrepreneur is just a natural way of being, to be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a natural progression for you. So for those of yeah. you that are out there, listen, uh, you know, he's a young influencer. If you don't mind, what's your age? <laughs> I am 25 years old, Catherine. And, and you know, the reason why I wanted to point that out, because there's some other individuals that are 25 year olds out there that's saying yeah. to themselves, I want to be an entrepreneur, but maybe I'm not old enough. You dispel oh. the myth of that. Totally. You know, I always been the youngest one, even, you know, in school, um, when it was uh, my job, I will always mm -hmm. be the youngest one. The thing mm -hmm. is, if you really want to do something, don't let your age be the reason, your age, your race, your background be the reason why you don't live your life full out. Your mm -hmm. life is yours. Take the lead. Yes. Take the lead and go all the way, you know, and take it to the top. So tell everybody, Shared Knowledge International, what mm -hmm is that all about so we i love to say that we enable powerful personal transformations mm. that end up delivering life business and career fulfillment mm -hmm. because especially when i was starting this personal development um rabbit hole there is a lot of you know i understand if you don't want to sit down with a completely stranger and mm -hmm. talk about your limiting beliefs mm -hmm. or how you know, when you were young, you, your father told you something and now you have all these crazy limiting beliefs around money, right? I get it. Mm -hmm. But then if you understand that working in yourself is the best investment that you can do because that's mm -hmm. going to reflect in every single area of your life, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine as if your business or your career is this Ferrari or a Bugatti or a Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to drive, what good is that vehicle to you? Mm. Right. So you have to be ready to take the lead and guide your vehicle to wherever you want to go. That's right. That's right. And say you got to you have to stay focused. You have to stay uh, in your lane. And, and when you're in that car, you're in that lane and you got a particular destination that you're heading to. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I tell you, I feel your energy. I love your energy. And for those <laughs> that are tuned in, you are tuned into SOT, the talk. We are talking to Julio. I tell you, he is an influencer. He's an influencer among uh, young Africans uh, in 2019 and 2020, philanthropy and social business. Let's talk about shared knowledge. Why did you even call it shared knowledge? Funny fact, I was, so I used to manage, and I did it for two years, I managed one of the top tiers incubation programs uh, here in Mozambique, and I was talking with a consultant from the US, and she asked me, so what do you do, uh, you know, once you're done with your nine to five job? And I said, you know what, I, I just work as a consultant, I do some business advisory, some career counseling. Um, some trainees, just regular consultant to job. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, so basic, you share knowledge. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know what, it's such a great name. <laughs> <laughs> I should actually go ahead and just name my business as that. And then I always wanted to go beyond my borders, beyond mm -hmm. Mozambique, beyond Africa. Um, 
and identify myself as a global citizen. So sharing knowledge international really made sense. And that's how I came up with the name, to be honest. Wow. And then when did you officially, uh, you know, start that organization? In September 2019. Okay. So listen, for those that's listening to this show, you may be a, a youth, you may be a young adult. Oh, yeah. Listen, he started it last year. He started his business. <laughs> he didn't let anything stop him. And so we are encouraging you. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let nothing stop you. And, and I tell you, Julio, Julio is a prime example to encourage all of us that if you have some knowledge, you ought to do what? Share it. But don't just stay local. Yeah. He's going international beyond <laughs> his home country. I tell you, listen, talk about what keeps you motivated as an Ooh. entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. The main thing that motivates me all day, every day is the infinite human potential. Mm. I really believe that we can be everything that we want to be like mm -hmm. i witnessed some of the most radical transformation even in my own life mm -hmm. i mean i grew up in a ghetto in africa in one of the smallest towns in my country i my mother tongue is portuguese if mm. you look at the statistics mm -hmm. i'm beating every single odd mm. right so don't let your current story be your mm -hmm. future story you can always mm -hmm. transform and just that thought that possibility just sparks me and makes wow. me want to work and help people do the same. Wow. So it's not about where you start. It's about where you're going and striving. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, it's so easy for people to look at Oprah, at Beyonce, uh, Tony Robbins, and think, oh my God, they have everything. But stop for a minute to see where they came from. Mm. You know, your, you know, where you were starting, it, there's nothing to do with where you're going to be headed. You know, mm -hmm. you are the one who decides your future. You just have to be willing to put in the work and make mm -hmm. things happen. Right. Put in the work, make it happen, you know, have that vision in front of you. W but what do you do if you have challenges and hurdles? And for those that's listening, maybe a young entrepreneur, maybe a teenager, and they're saying, I want to, I want to, you know, be an entrepreneur. I want to be a visionary, but it's too much around me that's hindering forward movement. <laughs> what would you say to them? First things first, learn to start small. You know, especially when we are young, when we're young, we think that, you know, I'm going to go and change the world. Guess what? You can, but it's going to be way easier for you to start changing one person's world at a time, mm. gain traction, gain experience, build momentum from that. And then you're going to go full, you know, sharing your passion and believing in your purpose. Learn to start small. Mm -hmm. There are so many benefits around that. That's one. Two, I often say that challenges, mistakes, failures are just the price that we pay to live our dreams. Yes. If you are doing something new, like there are 50% chance that you're going to fail, at least, mm -hmm. right? So don't let that be the reason why you're not doing whatever you think you should be doing. Go ahead and try it. And most of the times, if you fall flat, flat in, in the floor, if you break your face, you can always come back home. You can always retreat, recharge, and keep going and keep doing what you're doing. He just said, retreat, recharge, and keep going. He's giving yeah. us some, some action steps for those that's <laughs> tuning in, and I'm taking it in myself. Retreat, <laughs> recharge, and keep it moving forward. I tell you, I tell you, listen, I want to tap on a little bit about this word influencer because you've been nominated as the influencer <laughs> for two years. So when you yeah. think of the word influencer, what does that mean to you? I believe that influencer, like, literally means someone that sheds the light where people are not necessarily seen away. Mm. I think that it goes beyond having social media followers, you know, um, all the status that people give. You can be influencing people in your community. You can influence people in, you know, your family, in your household. Mm -hmm. Just be the light where everyone sees darkness and sorrow and sadness. If you're able to go in those environments and share your light and show people that, hey, there is a better way and I'm here just right beside you. Let's do this together you're an influencer and most important of all if you can do that in your own life mm -hmm. you you are set you are set up for success mm. i tell you be the light be the light is my takeaway from what you just said and also another takeaway is you said not just on social media because you know yeah. the youth, young adults we all we are on social media right that's like <laughs> the thing right 
And it's like, if you don't have all these followers, if you don't have all these comments or likes, it's like, okay, I guess I'm not influencing anybody. So I, I want you to dig a little deeper on that because I think that's a great piece of the conversation. Uh -huh. Being an influencer is not just on social media. Why do you say that? Not at all. I often say that, you know, likes and followers and comments are just vanity metrics. It mm. really doesn't matter. A lot of the times you can have millions of followers and they don't necessarily gain in solid value in their lives thanks to you right they're just you're just an entertainment for them really mm -hmm. they just go ahead because you post cute little pictures um funny videos and that's it but if you go beyond that if you have a purpose behind it if you really start operating from a place of love of kindness mm -hmm. then you'll start notice that when people will come to you and say hey those funny videos that you posted that helped me when i was in depression mm -hmm. you know those quotes that you post, they really helped me when I was really going through some rough times. Yeah. So make sure that you're not just falling into just some vanity metrics, right? And mm -hmm. also, we of, often forget that we have a life outside of social media, outside of the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, here in the 3D physical world is where life happens. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't have social media or you don't have the amount of photos that you have, those are just metrics. I know people who are making millions of dollars without even being a social media right so don't let that be a determination of your self-worth your mm -hmm. net worth might be your net worth but that has nothing to do with your self-worth at all wow wow for those of you that are just tuning in you are tuned into slt the talk and we are talking to entrepreneur and founder uh today julio i tell you he's the founder of a phenomenal organization called share knowledge international and he is an influencer again not just social media but in everyday life the people he connects with again he defined an influencer as one that is someone that shows light they are the light in someone else's lives and so this is what we are all about with the speak life tour we are to shine light we are to speak life to others uh and be that beacon of hope where someone may feel down or, or challenged and, and don't feel that they can move forward this is why we're here and this is why we bring on thought leaders such as Julio onto SLT the talk to bring different perspectives to the table um and, and just to get insight right so Youth and young adults out there that's listening to this show, what I want you to do is share, share, share. Share this information with another youth or young adult that want to be an entrepreneur, have the desire to be an entrepreneur, but may not feel they can do it. Um, we're hearing right now from Julio and how he did it. Now, actually, talk about when you was going through the process. You, you told the story about when you was talking to someone here in America about the name and that, how it, that all came to fruition. But what about the actual steps of making the yeah. business a reality? What did you go through? So, Sharing Knowledge International is actually my third business. Oh, my third, first, okay. Yeah, yeah. My first one I created when I was still in university my last year. And really, I just wanted to make ends meet. I just wanted to pay my bills, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It wasn't mm -hmm. about changing people's life. It wasn't about creating an impact larger than myself. Mm -hmm. It was just about paying my bills. Mm -hmm. I was talking with a friend of mine. He had all the business background. I mm -hmm. had all the educational background. And we thought, you know what, let's just create a technical vocational training program, like a short course, mm -hmm. and just offer that to people. We mm -hmm. thought it was a great idea. Um, and we learned at school that, you know, before you go ahead and create your product or service, you should first get to know your customer. Yes. So we made all of those forms. We went to do around 500 interviews with um, students from high schools to mm -hmm. see what type of courses they wanted to do. And to be honest, I was all in being a marketing trainer. That mm -hmm. was my goal. I'm yeah. going to have this business. I'm going to you know, teach marketing because marketing is life. It's how people perceive you. It allows you to get the job, sell your products and services. And to the, my heart, completely heartbreak, mm -hmm. around three people out of 500 mm -hmm. showed interest in marketing. Mm -hmm. My co-founder wanted to uh, deliver, you know, business accounting and mm -hmm. only five or seven people were interested in it. Mm -hmm. Everyone else wanted things as basic English, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, basic HR or ICTs. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting together seeing like, what are we going to do? I mm -hmm. mean, he was like, I'm not going to just teach things that I don't want. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting with him and saying, you know what, let's not put our ego before our vision. Mm -hmm. right we are in this together to make money we are in this mm -hmm. together to make some good 
potentially if right. people don't want the things that we want let's give them what they want mm-hmm. and that's how we just went on and did it um, i remember there was a living training from 7 a.m to 5 p.m five days a week and i was just giving basic english and hr uh, basic hr management um for people and that was it and that's how i really started my own business it wasn't around making impact or making mm-hmm. millions but just make ends meet but then eventually if you are a uh, you know a small business if you're just starting out something that i cannot stress enough is get a mentor mm. because i was making all of those bold decisions people will come to me and say julie that's amazing how you designed the course how you're managing this and that situation but i'll be like <laughs> i'm just faking it <laughs> mm-hmm. i don't know what i'm doing i'm doing the best that i can but mm-hmm. deep down i knew there was something out there that I didn't know. I couldn't grasp it yet. Mm-hmm. That's when I had one of the most awkward and difficult conversations with my co-founder. When I said, you know what? I'm going to get ahead and get a job where I can develop as a leader. At mm-hmm. a time, I didn't even know that mentors were a thing, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so for me to get a job where I could develop as a leader was the best way that I could then contribute back into my business. Mm-hmm. I did that. I work for an amazing organization that supports entrepreneurship and innovation in Mozambique and some African countries as well. I got a lot of experience around really building and expanding and pivoting business. Mm-hmm. That's where I got a lot of knowledge. And then I became an advisor to my first business. They ended up selling my shares to my co-founder. And mm-hmm. then I started creating Sharing Knowledge International. Wow. So yeah, as you can see, I started really small, just trying to mm-hmm. make ends meet. And I grew up from there. Okay. And so the other businesses, can can you elaborate a little bit on what they are? Yeah. So that's um, my first business. And now I'm just uh, an advisor, um, Mm -hmm. the technical vocational training program. And something that I do that a lot of people doesn't, I take a very business-like approach managing my career. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people think that, oh, you're an employee, um, you know, you're not your own boss, you don't lead in the risk. But guess what? If you choose the right organization, mm-hmm. you have the chance to bring your entrepreneurial mindset within existing organizations. And that can be just as much fulfilling as it is to run your own business. It really depends on what you're looking for, mm-hmm. how much risk you are willing to take. By the mm-hmm. end of the day, you still have clients, you still have partners, you still have your basic income you still have to pay your bills you still have to invest in yourself you want to grow in your career so i really have the business approach in my career and then of course i have share knowledge international wow and i tell you you know for those that are tuned in you are tuned into slt to talk uh julio just broke down the various types of businesses that he has he kind of shared very uh, in a very um transformative way transparent about why he initially started. It wasn't about the millions. It wasn't about making this huge impact. Uh, he, he was trying to survive with where he was at. And from there, things began to grow. And so we, I'm saying this and I'm stressing this because there's someone listening now or later that says, I don't have a lot of resources. I don't have a lot of money. I don't come from this wealthy background, so I can't get started. Julio is sharing with us right now his beginning stages and to, to how he got started and where he is now. And we speak life to every person right now that want to start a business, but you feel you don't have the capacity. But I think mm-hmm. he said something else that was very um, impactful. He, he's, he plugged himself into a career, a, a job, so he could grow as a leader. And I think a lot of times we have to put ourselves in places that we can grow. Because if we don't grow, how can we be impactful over our business? And so I think that was a really good strategy that you used. Um, talk a little bit about where do you see your company growing in 2021? Oh, yeah. So I've been doing a lot of online um, you know, trainings and podcasts and interviews. I'm mm-hmm. really considering about hosting some live events in 2021. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the really going to spark people sharing their own knowledge because I do believe that you know it's not me as an expert telling people what to do what I often do is that I just allow people to remember things that they just forgot Mm -hmm. and of course I bring some pieces of insight as well Mm -hmm. but really it's about people sharing what they know so I'm planning some very powerful, important events Mm -hmm. that will really allow people to come out of their shells and really step into their purpose. Wow. Come out of their shells and step into their purpose. Listen, guys, listen, listen. Uh, This is what we have to do. We have to step outside of our comfort zone because if we stay in our comfort zone, 
uh, a lot of times we are going to stay in a rut and there won't be any forward movement. <laughs> We're going to be, uh, how, you, how do you say, um, just time, time is passing on, right? And we're yeah. not going any farther, right? So let me ask you something though. When you think about entrepreneurship and you think about building in a community or you know enhancing a community where there may be pockets of challenges, how do you see entrepreneurs or how can entrepreneurs come together to improve communities where there may be some challenges? Sure, I really believe the entrepreneurs are the driving force of change. It really doesn't matter if it is within politics, if it is within social businesses or whatever, you name it. Entrepreneurs really have the power to create mm. new things, right? So every single one of us, if you have an idea, just go ahead and do it. That's the best thing you can do for your community. And second, mm. stop seeing other people as your competitors. Mm. You know, we could have the exact same business, me and you. And guess what? There will still be people who will buy from me because it's me. Mm -hmm. The same way they will buy from you because it's you, mm -hmm. right? So no one is, you are the new and no one is meer than me, <laughs> if that's even a word. Yes. But that's our special powers, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. stop seeing people as competitors and start seeing how you can collaborate. Mm. Because guess what? If you have, you know, an audience of a thousand people and I have an audience of a thousand people combined, we have 20,000 people, yeah. right? Imagine the impact that we can have if we are willing to put our egos aside mm -hmm. and work towards our vision together. Right. Wow. Yeah. I so tell you, really be open to do that. Yeah, collaborate. It's not about the competition. It's about collaboration. That's what I'm, I'm getting from you as you were sharing. Um, and for those of you that are tuned in, who can you collaborate in your community? Think about two to three other organizations, whether it's for-profit or non-profit, who can you collaborate or, or who can you at least start the conversation with, right? This week, this week, who can you start the conversation with? Who can you shoot an email to, text message to and say, hey, you know what? Let's have a conversation about how we can collaborate. And just start, just start, right? Start with the conversation first. See what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. And then where you meet in the middle, start there. Because a lot of times I think we wait um, and we get all these social media contests, kind of going back to what you were saying earlier, people have all these social media contacts, but how does that translate into our, our real everyday life? Are we really connected yeah. to them off of social media? Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah, and, and uh, talk about that. How do you feel we can convert or the conversion, should I say, from people we're connected to on social media to actually build in a real relationship? Well, the key word here is value, mm. right? You got to provide value to people. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about the cute picture. Again, it's not about the funny videos. It's really about things that a person can take and implement mm -hmm. in their lives. Okay. A lot of uh, social entrepreneurs that I coach, some of them are influencers. They often think of people as just a bag of money mm -hmm. and they're thinking about ways to get their money. Mm -hmm. And I often say, you know, you're getting it all backwards. It's not about getting money. It's you providing value and asking the, the amount of money you really believe your value is worth it, mm -hmm. right? If you're really providing value, you will realize that people are more than willing to pay. And most of the times, way more than you were anticipating. So mm -hmm. focus on providing some real value for your community and not just something that they can, you know, a quick fix that they can use and then come back from, you know, due to the same problem, but really focus on giving some long-term value, something that the person can take and implement in their life and see change in whatever area they're looking to have. If you have the mindset of giving, sure enough, you'll be receiving way more than you anticipated. And that's actually one of the biggest misconceptions about money in general. We think that we have to take, 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 and take, but guess what? The same way that we have to breathe in and breathe out, we have to provide value and we have to receive value as well. That's it. I mean, it's about value. Um, what value are we adding to another person's life? And then vice versa, what value are they adding to our life? You know, there's a book um, written by John C. Maxwell. And I want it, you made me think of this book because uh, you're an influencer. You know, you talk about value. In that book, there's a law that talks about the law of the influence. It talks about the law of magnetism. Um, it talks about the law of the inner circle, who's in your inner circle that's speaking to you, you speaking to them. Um, and for those of you that ever heard of the book, it's called, again, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John C. Maxwell. 
Um, again, it's a lot of great tips um, on how we can grow and cultivate as a leader and execute at the end of the day, right? Because we can have all yep. these great, wonderful ideas but we have to execute at some point. But when we execute, make sure we're executing with value. We're adding value to another person's life. We're adding value to the community. If you're a nonprofit leader and you have a nonprofit organization, the common question should be, how am I adding value to my target audience? How am I adding value to the community that I say that I'm serving, right? Um, yep. and, and so I just think it's so major, it's major. So you coach, when you coach with someone, um, mm -hmm. Is it more so with entrepreneurs, leaders, uh, young adults, or what is your coaching style? Yeah, sure. So I have two, dif two different main targets. So one mm -hmm. I call, you know, my regular B2C uh, approach. So mm -hmm. I coach yeah, aspiring or aspiring entrepreneurs or aspiring professionals. I okay. have specific offer for them. And then I also help people who are already in business or are already a professional and they're looking to grow and expand, right? Mm -hmm. And then from to corporates or for large organizations, I often offer what I call knowledge consultancy. You know, sometimes they're looking for someone to revamp the entire knowledge system within the organization, or they're looking to have, let's say a part-time project manager to really just spark things up and get things going. And mm -hmm. that's when I jump in. So those are like my two main targets, but really just making sure that people first transform themselves to then transform their business and their careers. Because let's face it, success is 80% the internal game, the mindset, the energy work, and the identity, and then only 20% the mechanics and strategies. Mm, work on self first, transform self first. And once you do that, it's going to spill over into your business. 100%. And guess what? If you do that as well, you will no, never have to worry about imposter syndrome. Because a lot of people, they just take the strategies and they implement it, but they never became the person that actually does those things naturally. So that's why they feel disconnected and they feel like they are faking it, right? But once you become the person, when you, once you become, you know, that successful entrepreneur, whatever that means to you, once you become, you know, the role model professional, you will be naturally doing those things without even thinking about them. Mm, a natural progression. Listen, listen. Uh, you are tuned into SLT, the talk. We thank everybody that's been plugging in. Share, share, share this link. Share it with someone that you know can benefit. Um, Julio, share with everyone your contact information. Like, um, I know we've been talking about social media, but we know that it's still a great way to connect. If you have that, share that or a website or any contact information you would like to share. Yeah, sure. So I am in social media, definitely. So I'm LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook mm -hmm. at Julio Mujoro. That's J-U-L-I-O-M-U-H-O-R-R-O. Again, J-U-L-I-O-M-U-H-O-R-R-O. -O -O. Or you can find me via my LinkedIn, uh, my company LinkedIn page that's Sharing Knowledge International. Again, that's Sharing Knowledge International. And I would love to have a conversation with you guys. Absolutely, absolutely. Before we close out this segment, share with our listening audience three tips and tools. I know you've been sharing all throughout this episode, but any <laughs> additional tips and tools that you can share uh, for budding entrepreneurs that's just getting started or an entrepreneur that's been in the past for some time, but maybe they've gotten a little jaded. What are some three tips and tools you would like to share? Um, so number one, it doesn't really matter if you're just starting out or if you are already in business and you're thinking about launching a new product or service, mm. try to think about the cheapest, easiest, and fastest way to launch whatever you're trying to launch. So mm -hmm. let's say if you want to launch a, uh, you know, a, a cake business, mm -hmm. maybe you will just make a few cupcakes and try to test it out, mm -hmm. right? So really just think about the cheapest, easiest, and more fastest way for you to test and validate your business idea. That's mm -hmm. one. And two that I feel that most people end up missing is take a few moments, a few hours, if you may, to really to reconnect with your vision. You know, mm -hmm. instead of just running, running without a purpose, try to reconnect with what are you really trying to achieve and start reflecting if your daily actions are actually putting you closer or farther from that vision, from that goal, right? And last but not least, I want you to pay attention you know, around the conversation that you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I found that a lot of people are in 
an abusive relationship with themselves. We speak to ourselves in ways that we will never speak to anyone else. So Mm -hmm. try to just be mindful about around how you speak to yourself. You might be surprised. Wow. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. SLT to talk. We are closing out another phenomenal episode with a phenomenal uh, entrepreneur that's doing great things and he's influencing others in an impactful way, making a difference, changing lives, sharing knowledge. I tell you, you definitely want to get connected. Just drop your uh, contact information one more time before we close out. Yep, that's on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's Julio Mujaro. That's J U L L I O M U H O R R O. J U L I O M U H O R R O. Julio Mujaro. Or you can find my company LinkedIn page, Sharing Knowledge International. There it is. And listen, speak life, family. Continue to speak life to your family, to your friends, to those that you're in business with. Speak life in the community that you serve. Uh, Don't allow anyone to tell you you can't achieve, you can't arrive, you can't build. Uh, This is your season and hour to go all the way, no matter what the difficulties might be around you. Check out our website at speaklifetour.org and you can follow us on all social media pages at speak life tour and with that being said everyone have a wonderful night